things were the way they were because powerful interests benefited. They um, were doing well while the city was doing poorly. And they sure didn't like it when I ran for mayor the first time. They did everything they could to prevent me from being elected, and they were stunned when I did get elected. Uh, and they were more surprised when I pursued the uh, agenda that I had laid out, and I did exactly what I said I was going to do. Uh, we achieved those results, but those people are hungry to get back into control. I was uh, driving to the airport one morning, and I had had a particularly um, vicious attack the day before, and I was talking to uh, one of my close uh, sort of political advisors, I said to him, I just don't get this. What in the world? Why so vitriolic? And he, he laughed. He said, Mr. Mayor, he said, you got to understand. He said, uh, uh, before you got elected, those folks were taking money out of the city with both hands. And he said, now, he said, that you're in office, he said, they're only able to take city, money out of the city with one hand because they got to fight you off with the other one. And, and, and they're trying to get rid of you for that reason. Um, and, and I've never forgotten that. I mean, he's, he's pretty much nailed it. When you're, when you're playing a ball game, if, if, you, if you fumble, you can't cry about the fumble. You got to pick yourself up and, and tackle hard and, and run hard the next play. And, and that's what I do. I, even when we make a mistake, I try to, you know, okay, gee, that was dumb. Let's not do that again. If you're going to be a leader, if you're going to be the mayor of a big, rambunctious, fractious city, wonderful city like Kansas City, Missouri, then you've got to be like an icebreaker. You've got to have a thick hull and a strong engine, and you've got to plow ahead no matter what.